Glad to have you join us on another episode of Art House. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Coming up today. <music> The Ninth Living Icon series celebrates a prominent advertising guru and art collector. The African Artists Foundation presents a solo exhibition. Then we have a performance and educative play written and directed by Professor Tunji Aziz. Oh, <laughs> we are going to party. Did you guys bring your second load? You people, you bring your big stomach. So look at the time you are coming. I'm sure you are anxious to see that and more coming up after we hear Ilo Adeyemi's take on life. Wordsmith for this week is titled Life in Centuries by Ilo Daniel Adeyemi. I wander in my little garden of thoughts. Flooded in my thinking titanic, I got lost. Lost in nostalgia. Then I heard a voice. It pierced through my heart to my pounding arteries. It echoed like a whisper in a graveyard. The voice sounds familiar and nostalgic. It's the voice of my forefathers. Tore in my mind centuries before my existence, showing me how great and mighty they lived. Their melodious evening tide games under the tree, accompanied by a band of palm wine jesters. They told me stories of their forest adventures, how skilled they were to kill the king of the jungle, and how they made bed of leathers from its sacred skin. They told me of their plantation, how huge it was, self-sufficient, chasing hunger miles away from grip. They told me moonlight stories in cozy nightfalls, stories of myth and great men before them. I wonder as I flip through their memories, in ever little signs they left behind, thinking of centuries after I exist, what shall I tell my great generation unborn? How shall I tell my story? Should I put it in signs and symbols, like my forefathers before me, or I should write it in an epistle? Should I put it in simple photograph for them to flip through? However the means, I must tell my story. Yes, life is a story, and a good story needs to be told. Thank you, Ilo Daniel, for that gentle reminder. Let's begin with the Ninth Living Legend series. It's an art event which honors personalities who have contributed immensely to the growth of the creative industry through a live joint session at the Didi Museum in Lagos. It's in celebration of a legend, legacies and histories the personality being honoured by these artists at the Didi Museum today is the chairman Troika Group, Dr. Bjordan Shubanjo, who is clad in a majestic white regalia and signature cap for the event. Today, we have um, different uh, artists with uh, different uh, materials, different medium. So here we're going to see different approach to the visual documentation of the um, the man that has been selected to be documented visually. So we have majorly and basically for drawing. So we have drawing as the basic tool for documentation. These artists see the sitter through various angles with scribbles, sketches and drawings.
He is interpreted in diverse techniques, also emphasizing the foundation of art drawing. Fine art is a part of uh, the social uh, contribution of art into uh, the history and social service of the people. So it's part of the documentation, uh, which is one of the functions of fine art. And drawing, as from inception, has been the very basics for that process, historical. Well, for this exercise, I used just the marker. And um, of course, that calls for a lot of skills, a lot of confidence. Because here is a tool, you do not use a pencil, you do not use an eraser, you just draw direct. After posing for them, the celebrant is honored for his contributions to the creative industry as one who ventured into the advertising sector when it wasn't fashionable, but braved the odds to make it a success story. When I look at some of the people that have been celebrated, you cannot fault, you really cannot fault the choice of these people. Uh, people like Professor Inka, uh, J.P. Clark, people who have uh, people who have they stand heads, heads and shoulders and they are, these, are, these are global icons uh, Mrs. Polaka Shulanke in, in, in law um, so it cuts across, it's not just people who are involved in us you know um, so like I said, I, I think I'm highly privileged to have been um, given this honor and, and been recognized. We tend to focus more on politicians, you know, those who have been in the atmosphere of politics, you know, who makes a lot of noise and so on. But he has been a silent achiever, you know, somebody whose name will open doors uh, that's how I see him. And for him to be there, uh, for me, it's an honor and privilege, you know, to be the one that is telling him, don't look this way, you look that way. The living legend, the ninth in the series, salutes creatives who dared to be different, taking a bold step and leaving a legacy that still lingers on. From there, we move to another part of the commercial city to enjoy a solar exhibition titled Now I Know Why Birds Fly, organized by the African Artists Foundation, AAF. Paper clippings, symbolistic of birds alongside the artist's statement, are part of the welcome party at this solo exhibition by contemporary artist Ayamfe Olarinde, organized by the African Artists Foundation in Lagos. My art is called um, Jagaizim. Jagaizim was coined from the word Jaga Jaga. Jaga Jaga, as we all know here in Nigeria, is, um, means something haphazard, something um, loose, something scattered, something crooked, you guess. So basically, Jagaizim was coined from, was inspired by, it, um, by a time, a moment in my life where I felt like lots of people didn't really understand the style I was doing, um, which was scribble art, right? So I was just putting together lines, um, and a lot of people didn't really understand where I was headed with that. They didn't really know that I was trying to create a piece. So yeah, most times I was getting the hate word of, um, oh yeah, this girl is doing jaga jaga, jaga jaga. As a way for me to become resistant to those things, I had to start calling myself jaga, um, a jagaism artist because yeah, it's actually who I was. I was always creating works from crooked lines, you guess. So basically, it's like a therapeutic process of self-acceptance. Art basically is and has always been like an escape from anything been an escape for me. It's also like a fluidity in forms. It's um, it basically just answers questions, answers my questions. Sometimes it's, it disturbs, it comforts, it makes me happy, it makes me sad, it makes me angry, you guess. So yeah, that's pretty much what art is for me. The 
artist put all her experiences from COVID to isolation to this moment in these images to display the need to break the shackles and urge to encounter the world. It's a show with a lot of emotions. If you see that there's a lot of like references to like family, friends, also loved ones that are lost. So it's a, basically like a, a, a palette, a different palette of her emotions and her experiences in 2021. Basically, this is a this is like a personal journal. This is me journaling in form of like paintings, right? It's me just telling stories from my diary. Things are taken down in a time where like things were both good and bad. I'm basically just like, appreciating moments, letting go of moments, appreciating people, letting go of people. It's also like me letting that part of me, that vulnerable part of me, out, so people can also feel. You get so whatever it is, people will take out of this has to be on their own personal um, choice. It's a global village, they say, and what happens at one end usually has a domino effect on others, despite the distance in between. These exhibits dissected through exploring the issue of identity, social reality, mental well-being and tradition. I don't try to impose what I want people to see when they see my work. Um, basically, I want people to experience themselves, experience whatever it is they wish to experience. Okay, I don't like to impose feelings in um, the viewers of my art. I've been following her for a, a long time and I'm happy that she's she's gotten to this level where she's showing her work to the world and you know um, and also this is also like I think with what I've seen is a lot of like snippets with you know a lot of a lot of the work that she can do you know scribble painting photography and I'm happy that she were able to sort of experience what she's been working on for the past five months, six months. There's not really one word to describe her face works because as you can see, it's like multidimensional. If you go in this room, you see that they're only drawings, basically. If, you, if you're here, you can see like she adds like elements that makes her work like come alive, like in 3D. And it's just like, it's just special, basically special. If you've been here, if you've been here like a lot of times, people that have been here, they will say, they come today, they will say, oh, this is the first time we're seeing something like so different here. Yeah, so it's like a special type of talent, a special type of way of expressing. For Larinde, there's only one race, the human race. So this graduate from the University of Lagos employs scribbling, photography, and multi-layered techniques to show that the world is your oyster, you're free to move and fly. Mark of a good work of art is quality. These are the works of art you sent in this week. Let's begin with this painting by Ayime Loki called My Helper. Is done with oil color and acrylic on canvas. He's encouraging everyone to be the change they want to see by making a difference in the world. Help someone. Then Zero Compatibility is an ink on cartridge paperwork done by Stephen Ezeke. Then Stanley Wabwezi has, what is this art called? A big question. It's done with mixed media. Mm -hmm. 
Then Emil is in deep conversation with his acrylic on canvas work. The journey so far is a charcoal on canvas work done by John. Then Clement Ekunife is showing us his latest oil on canvas work called A Sluggard. Then Tony Oweri is showing us this mixed media on textured canvas piece called Iyawu Atata. We wrap this up with this mixed media work done by Kenneth CJ. It's called Defense and Emotion. And that concludes the works of art you sent in this week. We appreciate you always for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming. Kangaroo Mothers, a play based on research, is one that enlightens the audience on a new maternal health method that can foster the bond between mother and child. Optimum Arts and Media has put up this play, which is based on intense research about a novel method that can reduce the numbers of neonatal casualties using this educative performance titled The Kangaroo Mothers in this unconventional space in Lagos. Mama, please. I am not going with you to any prayer house. The doctor said we are medically okay. I don't care. Hey, I'm begging you. Don't start talking like that woman. No. Help me. Let me carry my grandchild before I join my ancestors. My son is not the problem. Oh. You should check yourself. My son is very This improvisational play, written and directed by Professor Tunji Aziz, is wrapped around the story of three women battling different storms in their journey to motherhood. We have done the study, we have the findings. People can read it, people can hear it. But when people see a demonstration of it, it tends to sink and it tends to last. And it also makes a lot of impact. And the aim of the study is to be able to influence what people do, practice. And uh, so a drama will make them understand what we're saying and also to be able to assimilate it and also practice it. Then Eureka, the answer hits when they decide to adopt the skin-to-skin -skin contact of a mother to child in a bid to save their low birth weight and preterm newborns. Stop. 
sent to perform a cesarean section on her. To save her and this baby. You have it already. And uh, we also need a surrogate on stand, uh, standby. Uh, 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 or the IDMC method. What is the person expected to do? She just carried the baby, and in this case, babies. Alhamdulillah. If not that I was educated about it, I would have lost hope. mothers and babies together from the very first moment of birth. It's something so natural and so humane that unfortunately our medical systems in some ways have broken down over the years. And now it's op our opportunity and our obligation to right that wrong and keep moms and babies together from the beginning. I feel great that the cast and crew delivered based on the, I mean, what we saw and the responses from the audience. And I think from this point, the message has been passed and it, was, it has sunk in the minds of the audience. I learned that baby's death occurs in the first of two hours of life. And that infants such as my babies, who received IKFs, had lower death against those who received conventional care at 28 days of life. I was happy to see my twins doing well. Because I was unconscious, Mukta became a kangaroo father. Even when his mother volunteered, he refused. <laughs> this didactic theater is to enlighten the audience on the need to adopt a method that not only improves the bonding, saves money, but ensures that the child's survival is premium, no matter the odds. interesting performance there and we have some exhibitions but that will be on the next episode of Art House. Coming up on the next episode, the beauty of African culture is revealed through indigenous Nigerian fabric in an exhibition titled Ili. Three artists show austere imaginary an exhibition at Co Gallery. We encourage you to keep liking, sharing and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever-bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's Art House this week. Many thanks for taking time to share this journey with us. Looking forward to interacting with you online on any of our social media platforms. I'm Melinda Kinlami. See you next time. Thank you.